even many years before the main events, when a small meteorite hit the Earth, then something changed significantly around the world. This mysterious meteorite was later found by researchers at the South Pole. It was frozen in a large block of ice. When the nine researchers began to scrutinize the nature of the meteorite, they had to unfreeze it. When they did, a great deal of energy was released from it and this energy seriously affected the participants. They developed unusual powers. The authorities did not like such serious and strange investigations of these researchers, so they decided to quietly remove them. But these people did not give up. So after a few years they created an international organization that conducted research on the meteorite and tested the forces. After a number of studies, scientists were able to create black crystals, with the help of which ordinary people could become superhumans. But the probability of this was low. The way it worked was that when people ate the black crystal, it traveled to their hearts and was then called the omega crystal, and the superhumans who ate the omega crystals became even stronger. However, it was not unlikely that the effects of the omega crystals might not be very positive. A person could turn into a real monster. But the thirst for omega crystals did not diminish. Therefore, there were fights between super people to get the desired crystals. The regular police couldn't handle the street fights of the superhumans. So the authorities decided to impose a new control on superhumans by creating the Superhuman Association. The evening city glowed with the light of the street lamps and the headlights of the cars that drove by the various stores. People kept to the more lighted places, and hurried to get home as quickly as possible. With their bright lights, the stores encouraged would-be shoppers, disturbing the peace of the street. The owner of one of the stores shouted out a customer who was not sober. The guy who was with a bottle in his hands, without trying to resist, went out with indignation. The young man tried to drink every last drop from the bottle. His body trembled, whether from the desire for more alcohol or from the coolness of the night street. The boy expresses his displeasure at the rapid emptying of the bottle at length, tapping it as if this might fill it again with liquor. He doesn't notice anything around him when the street is filled with the desperate screams of a young girl. When he caught the voices, he turned his attention to the outside world and listened. His attention was directed to an alleyway that wasn't far away at all. There, drawn to the cold concrete wall by the men's excessive attention, was a frail girl who trembled and cried at the possible danger. The situation around the young girl changed rapidly as stubborn men began tugging at her clothes, ripping the buttons off her business suit, finding herself slumped to the ground with her hands held behind her back. She still tried to draw attention to herself with her cries for help, being already on the top. The men surrounding the girl were preparing further plans for her, but when they saw a new figure approaching, they stopped. The young man with the bottle approached them and prepared himself for a possible uneasy dialogue with these chatty men. The rest of the gang kept their eyes on the girl and were about to carry out their evil intentions. The rogue was ready to start a fight at once, so he had already raised his hand to strike the uninvited witness. But the guy expected it so he calmly stopped the man's hand, which never reached the target. Lowering his arm, he prepared to deliver a leg kick straight at his attacker's face with great speed, from which the latter flew off to the rest of his gang mates. From this quick change of position, he crashed into his buddy and fell to the ground with him. The other was very much displeased at such insolence on the part of the guest, but immediately received a flight of bottles in the face, retrieving the vessel that had become the instrument of the fight. The young man looked at the defeated men with intoxicated eyes and focused his attention back on the bottle. The man was enraged, but still decided to stand back with his gang, because the guy in front of them was definitely no ordinary person. The men pounced on their heels, leaving the girl alone. She began to get up from the ground. Noticing this, the young man began to wonder about her condition. The young girl started yelling at him, her concerned face directed at him. In turn, the young man looked at her with questions, also not understanding the situation he found himself in. She stayed on the sidewalk and began to defend herself against her rescuer as if she were in danger. The guy froze in place and stared in surprise at the girl, who in turn covered her body with her hands trying to ward off the possible scoundrel. The guy began to approach the defenseless person little by little, tensing his muscles, he came closer and closer as the young girl asked him for mercy. In a split second, he got as close to her as possible and hit her on the parietal, after which she lost consciousness. At that moment, the three villains were fleeing from the scene of the fight. They expressed resentment at having to escape, but there was nothing they could do against a man with such incredible strength. Suddenly, 
the same Superman who had given the gang of men a beating a few moments ago appeared on the roof of the high-rise. He looked down at them while they were puzzled by the guy's sudden appearance. Jin Yo opened his bottle that he had been with since the beginning and, as if out of thirst, took several large sips. The lad, leaping swiftly from the roof, landed confidently and firmly on the ground. The three bandits were visibly nervous, but quickly set their sights on disarming the young man. The hero kept his eyes on his opponents. In an instant, his hand burst into a bright blue flame. In the same instant, the gang leader began to change his appearance. His eyes turned black and his muscles began to increase rapidly. A few minutes later, a giant with blue skin and up to four meters tall stood in front of Baijinho. With his mighty large hands, he smashed the stone wall, displaying his strength. Without wasting time the giant was about to strike hard at the hero, who in turn stood confidently on his feet increasingly fanning his blue flames. In a split second, the young man makes a huge hole in the giant's body with his blow. The entire space is filled with bright flames. The monster screamed loudly and his minions shrieked. Jin Yo continued to stare at his opponents with a beastly gaze and threatened them with swift retribution. His flames did not disappear, but became even more powerful and threatening. With great speed, the other men began to run away from the impending threat from the guy, but his flames still caught up with them. In a matter of seconds, the fire had completely consumed the villains. A blue whirlpool filled the area around them and burned out all life from the two men. A guy sitting by the extinguished fire was pulling small dark stones out of it. A few hours later, Zian, after being rescued from the men in the alley, woke up in an unknown place with dizziness in her head. Fully awake she noticed the handcuffs on her wrist. This puzzled her even more. The girl stood up and looked around the room she was in. When she noticed the guy who'd probably brought her here, she wasn't too pleased, but she was scared at the same time. Thinking about the guy's possible intentions, Zian started to look around herself and her clothes, not noticing anything suspicious. She calmed down, but suddenly the unknown man, with a grim look, comes too close to her, which scares the girl even more. She plopped back down on the couch and began to defend herself against Jinyo, begging him not to hurt her. The guy with the sinister and untrusting look reached out his hand to her and asked her not to move. This made the girl even more frightened, and she went even lower to the bed and covered her head with her hands as the young man continued to reach for her. With light movements, Bai Jin placed a rounded grey metal collar around the girl's slender neck. The sudden touch of the cold metal made her body begin to tremble. After these actions, the young man turned away from the girl, leaving her in an unclear situation. She began to examine the collar with a worried face. When she touched it, an electric shock immediately ran through her body and a shriek was heard from the girl. The guy warned the girl about the possible consequences from her new accessory, but it was already too late. She was exhausted lying on the couch trying to catch her breath. Zian began to resent and yell at the young man, who, after hearing the insults, also began to yell at her to stop talking. He was ready to use his power against her to make her stop screaming. The girl covered her head with her hands and kept asking for help, but finally she gave up, hugged her knees, started shivering, whimpering and remembering her parents. The young man watched her unhappily. He stared at her emotionlessly, making his assumptions that she might have some kind of superpowers. The aura around him was scary and intimidating. The girl protested against these assumptions. Zian didn't agree with the conditions that she should stay here for a while that the stranger was putting forward. While she was cranky and angry at Jinyo, he in turn answered her indifferently and continued to drink the drink he had recently discovered. Zian still managed to persuade the young man to let her go, and he remotely, through a small remote control, released the girl from her handcuffs, but only partially, only as far as the toilet. Alone with her thoughts, the maiden continued to think of possible escape options, looking at her reflection in the mirror that hung opposite. Her mind was already thinking that maybe this guy wasn't as bad as he seemed, but when she remembered that he was the reason she was here, she dismissed those thoughts at once. It was deep night, a variety of lights filled different corners of the city. The cars moved slowly through the streets. Already sleeping on the couch, the girl noticed Jin Yo went to the restroom. This interested her because of the possible chance of escape. At the same time, the young man pulled out some kind of oblong blue container, which opened at the same instant. Blue fire erupted from the guy's hands again. He quickly placed his right arm into this mysterious container, where then a hatch closed separating his limb from the rest of his body. 
Steam filled the room as Bai Jin Yo caught his breath. A young girl was watching from a door that was not completely closed. The young man heard someone's presence, so he abruptly turned towards the door, but the watcher managed to escape. However, Jin Yo had already realized who exactly it was. However, she didn't manage to run far away, and when Zian fell down, the guy was already approaching her. She frightenedly asked him what happened to his hand. Steam continued to fill the whole place. The guy looked really angry that this girl was hanging around again and sticking her nose in his business. Such an ominous aura from the guy and the excitement made the girl faint again. The young man stood astonished, not knowing what he should do next. Zian woke up already under the morning, which made her very anxious, so she quickly got up. She was no longer somewhere in the restroom, but had been moved to the sofa in the living room. On the table next to her, she noticed the food she had prepared, which looked very appetizing. Next to the glass of milk was a note from Jin Yo saying that he had gone somewhere. The girl was glad for it, seeing a chance to escape from the guy's apartment. Meanwhile, the young man was standing on the roof of a high-rise apartment building waiting for someone, staring intently into his phone, as a man suddenly walked onto the rooftop. Jin Yo immediately took notice. The unfamiliar man had long silver hair and was wearing a black business suit. Wasting no time the young man tossed the bag of dark stones to the man, which he had collected yesterday after defeating no large gang with his flame. The stranger caught it right next to his face. By checking the contents of the package, the man in the suit handed Jin Yo a brown suitcase containing his cash reward for his labor. The young man also checked the contents of the suitcase, which was completely stuffed with bills. After that, he jumped from the roof, flying rapidly downwards. The stranger in the suit remained on the roof, smiling contentedly. He took out his cell phone and started dialing someone's number. A woman with red hair sitting on a luxurious sofa answered him. She was surrounded by two silver-haired servants, one of whom sat obediently at her feet, painting her black claws with lacquer. She was sitting in an open black outfit that emphasized her figure well. She looked like a predator, with a long tail and sharp claws. The servant sitting in front of her accidentally made the mistake of drawing extra lines from the varnish on her legs. This made the woman very angry. So she cracked the white-haired guy over the head with great force with her foot. She stood haughtily in front of him, tossing her phone to the floor and giving him new tasks. Forgetting about the inattentive servant, she went to another room. She was glad that she had found Jin Yo with the help of the man in the business suit who had given the young man the suitcase with the money earlier. She came to a large hall throwing the cape off her shoulders. In the room is a water ball with a curved shape, inside of which is the body of a man who was close to Madame Hu. The woman was obsessed with revenge for her beloved husband. She recalled the image of the hero who was to blame for everything, so now she was determined. Meanwhile, Zian tried to break the glass with a chair she found in the room, but the glass was too strong, so she didn't have enough strength. Being tired after futile attempts at escape, the girl remembered the food Jin Yo had left for her. Wasting no time she began munching everything at once that was on her plate. In the evening, as the young man was returning home with the suitcase he received today, an unknown man watched him intently from a tall tree. Hearing rustling from the direction of the trees, the boy reacted quickly and began to listen. But he failed to spot anything because of the darkness. Sitting in the empty room, the girl noticed the door open. She thought the young man had returned, but it wasn't him. A stranger stood outside the door, his body black with glowing blue stripes in the form of lines and rings all over his body. Remaining agitated, due to the feeling of someone's presence, the guy made his way to the balcony of his house and started looking through the window to see what was going on inside. What he saw there riddled him with surprise. Zn's feet were sticking out of the TV in the living room, and continued to sink further. The guy realized that it could be the girl's superpower and thus she was trying to escape. So without wasting any time he swung around to break the glass and catch the girl. Within seconds, the glass shattered into small pieces and the room was completely filled with the young man's blue flames. Jin Yo quickly pushed the devices aside, but even behind them, he didn't notice the girl. The place was empty. The guy thought she was moving through the electricity, but the devices were turned off. Thinking of another possible way to move Zian. He slammed into the wall with great force. The flames began to pierce through the wall, being released to the outside. This resulted in a huge hole in the wall. As the flames died down the young man continued to think about the girl's possible hiding place. But he also had an assumption that she had not disappeared of her own accord. 
and when he was already seriously thinking about kidnapping her, some limb, of an incomprehensible geometric shape, began to appear behind him, from the floor. This something thrust its sharp spear-like limb straight into Bai Jin Yo's chest with great force. He was unprepared for the attack. His body began to bleed. A snake-like limb of stone began to press the boy to the very ceiling. He counteracted the force of this stone snake by holding on to the ceiling with his hands, but this did not provide a secure hold for the boy, and the creature began to move his body, pressing him against the ceiling. In this way, it was as if it was preparing the acceleration for a throw. As the stone snake picked up speed, it threw the guy's body against the wall, with such force that cracks appeared on the wall, it would have been damaged a little more, it was all too fast for the guy, he didn't have time to do anything, so blood kept pouring from his body, from so many blows, however, Jin Yo gathered all his strength and got to his feet, he slapped himself on the place where the wound was, and then smoke started to come out of his hands and body, when the smoke completely disappeared, his wound had completely healed, leaving behind only scratches and traces of blood. It was a kind of reincarnation. When the boy had fully recovered himself, the stone limb began to change its shape, with protruding, geometric-shaped edges. A man's voice came from it, which puzzled the young man even more. Suddenly, the sandstones turned into a large mighty fist that began to attack Genio, who deftly dodged. The young man himself didn't hesitate to strike, so from the very first one, he severed a part of that large sand arm. However, this was not enough to completely destroy the person who controls these sand formations. The sand man showed Z into the boy to make sure that she was in his possession. The young man was concerned because she was right inside the sand cocoon. The sand monster had already started making plans, for he was confident that he could overpower the guy. But Genio stopped his fantasies and forced him to focus on himself. He looked at him with a confident gaze and smugly began to lay out his conditions and caveats for the sandy guest. However, the man did not take his word seriously and imprisoned the guy in a stone ball with a large number of spikes inside. Jin Yo still struggled to resist the onslaught of the huge ball from all sides. The sandman struck the stone ball hard, causing it to shatter into pieces, thus throwing the guy further away. As a result, he punched the wall with his body and destroyed several pieces of furniture. He was carried to the sofa itself. His clothes were torn and he had more wounds on his body, along with a shattered head. He was a little enraged at his position, raised his hand, like he was reaching for something. His glove made a barely audible sound at that time. And in the same second, a blue container flew to his hand, which immediately took his hand inside. The mechanism happened on the principle of a drum at a gun, replacing the guy's right arm with another. The guy pulled his new limb out of the container when he was surrounded by lightning and his hair changed to a blue color. The monster was comforted that his strength was enough to harm Genio, but after seeing his other form, he was no longer so happy. The young man sat with his head held up while bright lightning bolts struck near him. He could feel the electric shocks all over his body, especially his arm. The man didn't understand the appearance of such a drastic change in the boy's strength. But Zian felt even more hopeful that the young man would be able to save her. Jin Yo focused his gaze on his opponent while his body felt electricity flowing through it. Thanks to the lightning, Bai Jin Yo was able to move around the room with lightning speed, spreading his networks of electricity. In a moment, the young man was behind the monster's back, making the latter even more frightened. To counteract the guy's speed, the Sandman made slow movements, not having time to strike. Because of his advantage, the guy managed to snatch the girl from the monster's trap. Even Zian couldn't keep up with the guy's lightning fast movements, causing her glasses to fly off her face. Lightning bolts appeared on each side around the guy. As a sign of attention, the young man helped her and handed the glasses to the girl. She was surprised and touched by this act. Jin Yo kept his attention on his enemy and continued to attack with a large amount of electric discharge. The monster was surprised at such a powerful guy's strength that he couldn't handle and stop. It destroyed the Sandman's body and demolished part of the room at the same time. But that wasn't enough to destroy the monster completely, because it could move through objects. And now it was already peeking out from the wall. The young man didn't pay much attention to it, as if he didn't care where the Sandman might come from. He suddenly struck his fist with lightning straight into the floor, leaving many cracks on it. Jin Yo pulled out a pair of electric cables from the ground, holding them in front of him, he united with them with his tension, 
At the same moment, he quickly ran some distance away from the house along with the cables. Holding the girl and his container with his changing hands, he released a large amount of electricity through the cables directly to the house where the sand monster was located. In this way, he wanted to trap it in a lightning trap. The entire house was filled with bright blue lightning, the light from which illuminated the area around the house. Everything was filled with the monster's scream. He flew out of the house, smashing through the ceiling. The monster sat leaning to the ground, trying to use his strength to escape. But his body not only burned, from the lightning strikes, but he also lost his powers for a while. The guy appeared near the Sandman with lightning speed. He was ready to finish everything at once, as he had warned. So the monster was very afraid and asked the young man not to destroy him, but somehow to negotiate and let him go. Jin Yo didn't even listen to him and, with all his might, hit him on the head, pinning him to the ground. Smoke rose up from that strong blow. From this, the monster shattered into small pieces, leaving behind only superpower stones, which the guy immediately took away. The girl stood fearfully behind the boy. The young man was very pleased that he could get hold of the Sandman's superpower, and could connect with objects. Bai Jin Yo used his container to separate his limb. There was faintly blue smoke coming out from that spot. The girl watched it all and asked herself many questions that she did not yet have an answer to. The fellow pressed his whole hand against the other, from which smoke was still protruding as vigorously as ever. He was healing his body again, this time his arm, and in a few moments his hand was as good as new. He had a circle marked on the outside of his palm, the shape of the outline of Saturn, with a smaller circle in the center. The guy decided to try out his new superpower. He touched the ground, and a moment later his hand began to sink beneath the soil, imitating a strike with her hand underground. At the same moment, sharp large stones appeared from underground. Zian was startled by this sudden change of events. Jin Yo really liked his new super strength. At that time, the girl also asked the guy to let her go. It depressed his mood a bit. The young man explained to her how the collar worked and how to remove it, and the girl did so at once. He realized that there was no point in keeping her near him, for she had no extraordinary powers. Zian decided to leave quietly before the guy noticed anything. She walked slowly and silently, but he still paid attention to her. Looking at her bare feet walking on the ground, he remembered a little girl, with dark hair, who also walked barefoot on the muddy ground. Thinking about it, he abruptly stopped her with his command. The girl stopped, she didn't know what else Genio wanted from her. The boy got up and walked towards the house, telling the girl to follow him, because he didn't want to let her leave him yet. The girl did not understand anything, but decided to follow the young man. Jin Yo easily opened the garage room, where a beautiful red car was parked, as if it was for racing. He thought they should leave this ruined house and find another room, for it was not impossible that they had someone on their tail. Zian started to look at the car passionately, wondering what kind of fortune the guy had. She hoped that he would be able to drive her home. Jin Yo felt guilty for leaving the girl without shoes. He started to deform some blue-colored material as if it was plasticine. A few seconds later, a pair of shiny blue heels appeared in his hands. The young man held out Zian's shoes. She took the heels in her hands and began to examine them. She couldn't hide her excitement because Jinyo had made these beautiful heels with his own hands. Without wasting any time, she put them on her feet. The shoes fit her perfectly. She started praising the guy, but he wasn't happy about it. Zian stood beside the guy. And for the first time in all the time she had spent, she decided to introduce herself and get the guy's name, because as if he wasn't so bad because he had saved her, she awkwardly waited for him to answer. The young man was ready to introduce himself, but suddenly a wall-breaking stranger appeared behind the girl. He began to react quickly when the unknown villain began to approach the past, when he destroyed her lover and took his powers for himself. Zian was already preparing for a possible strike, but Jin Yo managed to protect her with his hand. The opponent's knife went through his hand. To protect the girl, the guy threw her back to the driver's seat in the car. Zian couldn't react as quickly as the guy did. At the same time, he began to furiously beat the stranger all over his body. The young man was getting tired, but he didn't hurt the thief. He didn't understand what was wrong. What kind of material was this man of steel made of that he didn't succumb to the guy's strength at all? In an instant, the steel man struck Jin Yo's face with a strong blow. It was very powerful for the young man, so his nose and mouth immediately bled. He realized that he had to hold on as long as possible to protect the girl. 
the guy didn't give up, and prepared to hit his opponent hard, however, he was already exhausted, his body was too weak to fight any further, a lot of blue flames appeared from the guy's hands and he struck him hard, the steel man blocked his attempts, it was all a bit overwhelming to the young man's spirit, Jin Yo's body continued to drain and bleed, he also noticed that a couple more men of steel had appeared, one of them was holding a device that looked like a gun, the last man of steel injected some kind of transparent liquid into Jin Yo's body from his gun, in the same instant, a numbness went through the guy's body, he stopped feeling his powers, then the wretch struck the young man in the stomach with all his might, making the blood gush with renewed vigor, in the blow he lifted him above him, the monster did not stop for a moment, thus preventing the boy from doing anything, the man of steel turned the guy so that he was on his knees, and his hand, with the knife still in it, he brought it up behind his back, his blood continued to trickle to the floor, a girl was watching all of this fearfully, behind her, madam who appeared, heading straight towards Jinyo, Zian didn't know this woman, so she didn't know what to expect at all, at that time, the young man sat leaning against the floor and took a breath, Madame Hu was surrounded on her sides by guards in the form of steel men. She looked at the powerless young man with satisfaction, already anticipating the taste of victory. The girl did not know these people, and did not understand what was going on around her. The guy only silently observed the situation, trying to analyze further actions. The woman was glad that the young man right in front of her had no strength of his own. After all, her henchman injected him with a poison beforehand that suppresses superpowers for a while. She was furious and ready to massacre Jinyo. She was overflowing with anger and hatred towards him, ready to cause him suffering for a large amount of time. The guy was still watching her, and when he couldn't remember her in all seriousness, Madam Hu was in great surprise about it. She thought that he just couldn't forget her, because he had caused her so much suffering. The woman started yelling at the young man in a rage, reminding him of the events. He recalled moments from the past when the red flames had cut and destroyed the body of a man with thick wavy silver hair, and young madam who had tried to save him. After Jin Yo remembered everything, the woman's feelings once again raged with the desire for retribution. She wanted to destroy him not only physically, but also mentally, to show him everything that she had gone through. Zian, who was still sitting in the auto at the time, realized that she had to pretend like she didn't know the guy in order to save herself. She began to suggest to Mrs. Who to end things peacefully, such as taking money from the young man, but this only made the mistress angry, and she was already preparing to strike at Zian with her long, sharp tail, she didn't care who she vented her rage on, because she had plenty of it already, Jin Yo reacted quickly, and took advantage of his new superpower, he lifted the car to a small height, with as much earth and rock as he could control, as if in hand, he led the car and the girl out of the danger zone, Leading them to the cliff he stopped the entire stone structure and began to tilt it downward. The car continued to roll down the slope now, between the trees. Zian was frightened by this sudden change of events. She couldn't do anything because the car wasn't started. So the car continued to roll downhill, miraculously avoiding the trees. Madam who didn't understand how this was possible, after all, they had used poison against him. But then analyzing, she realized it was all about his arm. He'd managed to concentrate the other's power in his hand, which was as if it didn't count against his body. She was preparing to pay him back and destroy him as quickly as possible. She was ready to pounce on him and tear him apart with her claws. But at the same time, Jin Yo took advantage of his new limb and used it to approach the fire extinguisher. Then, after the fire extinguisher burst, large amounts of foam and powder began to fill the room, distracting the thieves. The young man quickly changed his hand to another hand that had the power of lightning. This way, he was able to free himself from the steel guard. And with renewed strength, he headed out to catch up with Zian. A guy blithely jogged beside Mrs. Who, making her barely notice him. His lightning bolt damaged her tail, which then began to bleed. The woman was not too upset about the hero's escape, for she believed that he would still face severe punishment. She already had a backup plan, and was ready to get our hero from anywhere on the planet. The guy was running fast through the forest. He was very tired, but still found the strength to move on, because he had to catch up with the girl in the car. When he had already caught up to the car, he quickly jumped into the front seat. The girl was surprised at the sudden appearance of the guy, but at the same time rejoiced, because he was alive. Thanks to Jin Yo's superpower, electricity appeared in the car, 
causing the car to start. The guy sat concentrated and told the girl to look at the road. Zian only then paid attention to the car, and noticed that they were approaching the highway on which a large truck was traveling. They were lucky enough to get on the road, bypassing a large truck, but that quickly became irrelevant, for the main goal was to escape from Mrs. Who and her steel guards. The guy with the bloody clothes got to his feet and ordered the girl to go forward. She didn't understand his thoughts, didn't understand what he wanted to do. Noticing the fast movements of the steel men and Madame Hu between the trees, Jin Yo realized that they wouldn't be able to get away from them by car. The young man realized that they were getting close and his strength was running low, so he quickly started thinking of another plan. He was going to buy them a little more time. From his blue container he pulled out another hand, this way he wanted to distract them. This should have delayed them, or led them down the wrong path altogether. When he threw his other hand towards his opponents, he simultaneously directed his electric power there. A large blue glow rose in the air. It was very bright, so it could hide them from their opponents. The young man took the girl with him in his arms. He quickly rushed away from the car, deep into the woods. Every moment was important, so he used them to the fullest and put his strength to the best of his ability. Madame who quickly discovered Zenyo's plan, so she headed in their direction to catch them red-handed. She realized that the sooner she dealt with the guy, the sooner she could get rid of the heavy thoughts of her loved one's death. She stopped on the road and saw an abandoned car at the edge of the woods, realizing that they were already deep in the forest. Mistress began to think of another plan. At the same time, a truck with bright headlights was traveling down the highway at her side. The driver and passenger started paying attention to the woman, eventually beginning to make their own plans for her. Mrs. Who didn't like these men? So she quickly slapped her powerful tail on the front of the truck, thus splitting it in half. Meanwhile, Jin Yo and Zian had moved quite a distance away. They stopped under a bridge where the guy took a break. He crouched down, blood gushing from his body and mouth. He was very exhausted. He stood up and began to move along the wall, ignoring the girl who was worried about him, looking at his condition. He hoped they wouldn't be found soon, so they could take a little break. Jin Yo continued to bleed, a trail of blood left on the concrete wall. Zian was indeed very worried about him, after all, he had sacrificed himself to save her. Just then, the guy started pulling something out of his jacket. The young man pulled out a picture of a little girl who had a birthday, so she had a shining crown on her head. His hands began to tremble, he knew clearly what he had to stay alive for. The girl inquired about this picture. But the guy kept looking at the paper and told the girl to get out of here soon, because they would be found soon. She didn't want to leave the guy in such a broken position. Zian started to lift him up from the floor by his arm. She began to encourage and motivate him with her words. Finally, the guy stood up and, adopting the girl's mood, began to assure her that today they would definitely deal with the villains. The young man set his sights on keeping Z and alive. But suddenly, Mrs who fell down from above, from her landing, the concrete wall that was near the young people started to collapse into small pieces, this all happened suddenly, no one was prepared for madame whose imminent appearance, reacting quickly, Zian pushed the guy away from her, she was surprised at her action, but knows she's doing the right thing, and the guy felt unable to save her, Jin Yo was sitting fearfully beside the mountain of stones with madame who on top of him, he didn't want to think of the girl's imminent death, for it was only before he had promised that she would live. His body was trembling, he couldn't believe that Zian was gone and he hadn't kept his promise to her. This greatly soured his mood for the battle, he stood there confused and didn't know where to start. Taking advantage of the young man's moment of weakness, the three steel men were going to hit him hard, they pointed all their knives at him. Thus, it was as if they had imprisoned him in the blades of their guns. Bai Jin Yo allowed them to do so. They drove the knives in from different sides of the guy's body, who in turn stood emotionless and bled from the wounds inflicted. He saw traces of blood on the stones, saw Z An's hand peeking out from under the stones. He thought back to his words that she would be alive. He was furious, his rage increasing by the minute. As a result, all of his rage and hatred poured out. From such an active surge of power, all the steel men who were around the young man were burned alive from such a bright radiation. Madame who didn't understand what was the reason for the guy's strength being so powerful. His power kept releasing, there was a bright blue glow and a large amount of lightning around him. 
The woman was surprised that he was still under the influence of the poison and had such great strength. So the surviving steel guards continued to shoot syringes of overwhelming super strength at him. They flew swiftly toward the guy, having never reached the target. The syringes with liquid exploded a few centimeters from the guy's body. Mrs. Who was more confused, for she didn't know what to do next. The steel men were trying to destroy Genio by any means possible, so they ran towards the guy. At that time he unleashed a large amount of lightning on them. It struck them completely burning their bodies to the ground. A moment later, the guy was already standing beside Miss Hu, who was very surprised because she hadn't noticed his quick movement. She couldn't believe her eyes that he was able to refine his power like that, so she feared her defeat. The woman quickly bounced back from him to think of a further plan of action. She was nervous because she didn't know what to use against the young man. She thought she had done enough when she killed his companion. Shifting his gaze again towards the large amount of stones, Zian's hand could be seen from underneath. Without wasting time, the boy began to dismantle the pile of heavy stones. There was a little bit of hope in his soul that the girl would be saved. On the ground lay the girl's mutilated body completely covered in blood and many cuts. Some of her limbs were damaged. The girl's glasses lay broken nearby, and the crystal shoes the guy had made for her were broken. He carefully lifted her up so as not to hurt her even more. There was no face on Genio. he felt very sorry for letting the girl die. He wanted to at least fix it somehow, but he didn't realize what exactly he could do. After a moment, he pierced his chest with his claws, reaching his heart, which contained several black crystals. This was the last chance to save the girl. Genio wanted to check all the possible options. The guy pulled one out, leaving a small hole in his chest. Then, he carefully placed a piece of crystal in the girl's mouth for her to swallow. He continued to look at her with regret as tears welled up in his eyes. It was his last hope of saving her. He finally introduced himself to her because they had been interrupted the first time. He gently laid the girl down, and left her. Again the lad stood proudly on the mountain of stones. His decisions were firm and final. His body was a combination of several shades, black and white, and his vessels, which were blue like his lightning, peeked out from his muscles. Jin Yo watched Madame Hu. She was still nervous but tried to hold herself confidently. She felt a sense of justice, after the girl's death, for now he too had lost someone important to him. He glared angrily at her, his aura dark and frightening. He threatened her that he would take her life. It sounded very confident and fierce. If he can't save Zian, he will definitely get rid of Madame Hu. Jin Yo lightning flashed in a small area, it could be heard for a long distance. It was as if the lightning was shouting its fury and anger. The lightning struck the most important target, Miss Hu. However, she tried to dodge while protecting her body and tail, bringing it closer to her. She couldn't keep up with a guy that fast. When just before she could feel him, he was already there. The guy was ready to strike her hard, preparing his hand, which was blue from a lot of tension. Jin Yo strikes the woman with his lightning bolt, causing her to fly upwards. She grasped the spot of the strike, trying to endure it. Madam who didn't understand how the guy managed to change powers so quickly and hit her so hard. The woman began to tumble downward like a cat, holding her arms out in front of her, and to prevent herself from falling, she made a deft maneuver to get to her feet. The guy started throwing quick lightning fast punches at the woman, while she dodged them and tried to hit him with her fast tail. It was all very fast and intense, and it seemed that their strengths were equal. But in an instant, the guy was faster than her, so he grabbed her tail. He was strong, so he easily pulled her toward him, knocking her off her feet and throwing her into the air. Madam who didn't expect such a rapid turn of events, so she didn't know what to do in this situation. However, Jin Yo clearly knew what to do, and quickly, holding her tail, he slammed her against the floor. The impact made a big hole in the ground and cracked the asphalt. After that, he whisked her away in the direction of the apartment building, and without wasting any time, he also went after her with his lightning-fast strength. He didn't waste a moment to get the woman over with as soon as possible. When she landed on the wall of the house she noticed the guy rapidly approaching her, so she quickly bounced away from that place. As the guy slammed into the walls of the apartment building with lightning speed, punching through them, he quickly turned to her, already preparing for another blow. The woman didn't give up and kept running away from the guy. She tried to delay her defeat as long as possible. There was thick smoke and dust in that area, and large chunks of stone were scattered around. 
it was clear that there was a very large and persistent battle going on. Meanwhile, underneath the destroyed bridge was a girl who was still left lying in her own blood. Zian seemed to be sleeping and dreaming, as if she was immersed in some transparent liquid. She was completely naked and her hair had changed color from yellow to a bright blue, very close to white. At that time, her body began to recover, her scratches and wounds disappeared, and she was almost back to consciousness and real life. Zian was like floating on the river of life. The boy and his rival continued to fight. They were full of hatred and rage towards each other and wanted to end it quickly. It felt like they were fighting on equal levels, as neither of them could win quickly. Jin Yo created a large stream of blue fire, thus flooding Madame Hu with it. She tried to resist him, but still he was too powerful to leave her unharmed. After a few of these lightning fast blows from the guy, Miss Hu couldn't stand it, so she started to change her form. Smoke was coming off of her. At that time her skin color changed to orange. For a while the guy was surprised at the woman's quick transformation. Her opponent now stood before him in full steel armor that covered her entire body and tail. She was now confident again, for that was her strongest trump card. She gave him the first blow, and not only was she stronger, she was also many times faster, so she could easily wound the guy in the chest. Jin Yo didn't expect this, so he quickly changed tactics. Realizing that she had a numerical advantage, the woman began to land numerous blows on the guy. There were so many of them that Jin Yo barely had time to block her steel blows. However, the guy didn't give up and still tried to win by his speed. He began to quickly circle around the woman pushing her into a swirl of blue flames with lightning. The guy's quick and sharp blows were directed at her from different directions. The woman couldn't even see his hands. Only the flames from the flames were visible. It seemed as if Jin Yo never ran out of strength. A steel suit protects her from defeat. The guy meanwhile continued to twist around her setting more and more punches that she blocked. While she was protecting herself, she could watch him move. And even though he couldn't be seen at all behind his incredible speed madam who still spotted him and quickly delivered a strong blow with her tail, thus injuring the young man, Jin Yo remained surprised and angry because she had caught him. The steel woman didn't stop and continued to strike the guy's body. She felt that she could defeat him alone. Madam Hu kept hitting and scratching him while the guy held her hand and held on with all his might to prevent her from hurting him even more. The woman rejoiced because her victory in this fight was very close. Mrs. Hu was about to deliver a decisive blow to the head of the guy who was already exhausted and holding on from the last of his strength. But at one moment, the woman's attention was distracted by something. Jin Yo also paid attention to this. There was a girl levitating in the air above them who was surrounded by waves, as if she was being held in chains made of water. It was Zian, who was now a superhuman and her superpower was the mastery of water. She was completely surrounded by water. Her hair looked like blue sea water. After seeing what superpower Zian now has, the guy comes up with a new plan, which is to melt his rival's metal suit. So without wasting any time, the guy started to put this plan into action. He gathered all his strength to direct as much flame as possible towards the woman. Madam who understood everything, but it was too late. Her costume was starting to burn with blue flames making it start to melt. Above them, Zian with her long watery hair hung in the air. Leaving the woman completely in his flames, he rushed over to the girl to pick her up, thus bringing down a large amount of water. From that moment the young man could breathe out little by little, for all was over. When Mrs whose metal suit was already melted. She saw a large amount of water flying towards her from the sky. The woman realized that this would end badly for her, but there was nothing she could do about it. The guy and the girl in his arms landed safely some distance away from the scene. The guy's appearance changed to his usual one. Now he still had dark hair. He kept looking around, hoping that it was over. A woman stood on the battlefield like a statue. Her costume had been melted and then flooded with water leaving droplets of spreading metal all over her costume. All around, everything was catching up, the last smoke from the flames was coming out, and the water was looking for a way out. It was a cloudy day in the city, for it was raining heavily. There were cars moving slowly along the street, as well as umbrellas with people under them moving smoothly along the streets. Some stores were open to shelter and warm random passers-by. And while the woman standing under the umbrella was entering some symbols on the panel, her younger companion noticed something unusual. This also caught the older woman's attention, so she looked at the girl interestedly. Approaching the girl, a woman named Yang Fangqin covered her with her umbrella. 
she turned her attention to the side where she saw a man holding a girl in his arms. It was by Jinyo, holding Zian in his arms, who was unconscious. There was a transparent film on the guy's shoulders, which at least somewhat protected the young people from the rain. The guy looked emotionlessly toward the woman with the baby. As it turns out, they knew each other, so the woman quickly recognized the young man. She invited Jinyo and his companion to her house. The woman treated the guy to tea while he dried off after the rain. The people were in a large living room, next to the sofa where the woman and the young man were sitting. A little girl who had been by Yang Fang Qin's side since the beginning was playing on the floor. While Jin Yo drank his tea, he began to ponder over his future plans. Fang Qin suggested that they stay at her place for a while, however, the guy didn't want to disturb the woman's calm and carefree life. The woman wanted to help the young man in some way. After all, he had once helped her and her daughter, Chen Yu, live this very peaceful life. She was upset that there were so many events in the boy's life when he risked himself for someone. The little girls also had superpowers, so when she held the bear, and engaged her power, she was able to shrink it several times. The mother said that her daughter chaotically increased and decreased objects in the house. This pleased the guy, for it meant that the girl was getting stronger. Then the guy turned serious and began to tell about his future plans. Namely, that in 14 days he would save his little sister. He was very firm and confident. Meanwhile, the rain continued to fall, washing over the frozen statue of a woman in a steel suit. She froze in a rather startled and fearful manner. After a while, the woman still managed to get out into the open. The steel suit shattered into small debris. The woman lost her balance and fell down, her hair growing shorter from the guy's blue flames. Madame Hu was incredibly furious. She knew that she would definitely find Bai Jin Yi and would definitely take revenge on him. Her feelings for him did not disappear, but only grew stronger. Zian slowly woke up. When she was fully awake, she quickly sat up on the bed screaming. The first thing that struck her was that she was alive, and it was probably not a dream. She was in a spare bedroom that she had never seen before. She wasn't wearing her pajamas and there weren't any of her things nearby. The girl tried to recall the events that had happened before, and only remembered how she had pushed the guy away, setting herself up for the falling rocks. She suspected it wasn't Jinyo who had brought her here. When Zian accidentally touched her hair she noticed that the color had changed to blue. From such a surprise the girl screamed at the top of her voice. This was noticed by the woman who was in the kitchen at the time. Yang Fang Qin decided to visit the girl's room, for she was worried that something had happened to her. The woman's unexpected visit made the girl even more frightened and even more unaware of the situation she was in. Zian quickly jumped out of bed and began to defend herself against the stranger. However, she quickly began to tell her that she did not wish her harm. Zian listened to her carefully and all the words seemed true. The girl decided to believe the woman and went with her to the kitchen, where a little girl was already eating her portion of breakfast. She said hello and met Yang Fangqin's daughter. After that, she sat down at the table and began to question the woman about how she got here and the whereabouts of Jin Yo who was with her. After breakfast, the woman decided to talk to the girl. She told her about how she was now a superhuman and what happened after she lost consciousness. Yang Fang Qin also talked about how Zian had unconsciously saved Jin Yo from Madame Hu's attack. Fang Qin began to tell the girl about the classification of superhumans and the levels they were divided into. This cleared up some considerations in the girl's mind. Conventionally, one could divide superhumans into three types, where the first, were those who were only slightly stronger than an ordinary person, the second, were those who had special abilities, and the third, had incredibly powerful strength, no one could compare to them. Zian was uncomfortable, but she still decided to ask the woman what kind of relationship she had with the young man. After all, they might not just be friends or good acquaintances. To this, she replied that Jin Yo is a close friend to her and her daughter, so she is willing to help him in any way she can. At that time, the guy himself entered the room. He had a very serious look, was lightly dressed, and held a small bag in his hands. He noticed the girl at once, and went towards her. The girl was nervous. But what she didn't understand most was what happened next. Jin Yo placed the very pouch he had held back in the beginning in front of her. And as it turned out, it was completely full of gold coins. Zian didn't understand what she needed those gold coins for. The guy only replied that it would help her escape after a while. The girl was also nervous about it, but she thought it had something to do with the guy's younger sister. And she was right. 
Yang Fang Qin suggested that they stay here. The guy pondered over this while drinking some alcohol in parallel. In the end, he agreed to it, so that the girl would stay here. Suddenly, Jin Yo was very wary of something. He quickly cast his gaze toward the window, beyond which were many trees and houses. The young man realized that his senses never failed him. Indeed, they were being followed by a large owl that was piercing through the window of their house. One of its eyes was normal, and the other was green with a skull shape inside. At the same minute the window was pierced through by a bullet, which flew swiftly toward the lad, setting him wounded. Then continuously a large number of bullets started attacking the room. They hit not only the guy, but also the household items around him. Someone really wanted to kill Jin Yo right away, or lure him out. Yan Fang Qin quickly sprang into action, and used her superpower to protect everyone. She covered everyone with her steel arms. The young man told everyone to stay inside and that he would handle everything. Jin Yo quickly ran to the window and jumped out of it right towards where the shots were coming from. He quickly approached the sniper and was about to strike him with his foot. Again he is not given peace and opportunity for a quiet life. From such a swift and powerful blow, some part of the building collapsed, on which the girl, who had a rifle in her hands, was standing. The movement knocked her off her feet, and she began to fall as well. Jin Yo shifted his gaze to his opponent, and recognized her. It was a girl with long white hair. She kept an angry look on the guy and was preparing to strike more blows at him. The girl kept firing a lot of shots in the guy's direction to hurt him in some way. Nevertheless, he used his superpower, thus repelling all the bullets flying towards him. Suddenly, another girl who already had short white hair and only had a katana in her arsenal of weapons already appeared on the other side. Jin Yo didn't expect that there would be two opponents. This was able to lower the guy's guard, and the girls were able to damage him with both bullets and katana at the same time. Thus, they believed that they could quickly overpower the guy with their dual strength. However, the young man didn't give up, and still tried to strike back. Somewhere he was getting as close as possible to the girl with the rifle, and was about to strike her with his foot, but she quickly disappeared from sight. He realized it was teleportation. Deciding to hide in the forest for a while, he landed in a small clearing where he had time to heal his wounds. The girls also joined him, and started talking about their intentions to eliminate him. Everything came together in the young man's mind. He realized that they had tracked him with the help of this strange owl with different eyes. Jin Yo continued to look at them with an untrusting gaze. The girls in front of him were Jin's sisters and belonged to the Light Corporation. The one with long hair and wielding a machine gun was called Jin Yushi, and the one with a katana was called Jin Shimi. They were going to finish off the guy as quickly as possible to fulfill the corporation's assignment. The girls quickly began their task together. Yushi quickly relayed instructions to her sister to overpower Jin Yo more effectively. Both of them headed straight towards the guy. They began to surround the young man from both sides. This way the girls wanted to inflict as many blows on Jin Yo as possible. Shimi started using her katana at close range. At that time, the other sister started attacking the guy with her machine gun beams. In this position, the young man couldn't attack his opponents, only avoid them. Jin Yo tried to block the swift movements of the katana so that it wouldn't hit him too hard. Yushi ordered her sister to kill the target as soon as possible with her trademark impulsive blade. Their little comrade helped Shimi by bringing a special katana. She was sure that now she was definitely strong enough to disarm the guy and fulfill the order. She prepared her sword to finish everything with the first blow. The girl started mercilessly smashing everything around to get to the guy, who kept dodging the katana's attacks. She cut down trees behind her, completely severing their trunk with her weapon. Jin Yo barely avoided Shai Mai's swift blade, for he realized that it could seriously damage him. Noticing a tree falling nearby, the young man quickly grabbed it to use it as a shield and distract the attacking girl a bit. Jean Shimei lightning fast quickly chopped the tree trunk into small pieces. When she finished with the tree, she realized that she had lost sight of the guy. Jean Yo quickly appeared behind the girl, who was already flustered, due to his quick movement. He was already preparing to strike her with his fist, but he was prevented from striking by the other sister, protecting Shami. Yushi shot straight at the guy's stomach to hold him back. Due to this, the girl with short hair was able to avoid Jin Yo's strike. However, when she turned her attention to his hand, she didn't notice any blue flames, which meant that he didn't want to seriously harm her. 
Despite being so gracious on the guy's part, she still realized that completing the corporation's assignment was the most important thing to her. Shimmy had already prepared to end it all with one blow, but her katana stopped a few centimeters from the young man's neck. Her sister took notice, and started yelling at her to run her errand faster. Yushi realized that her sister was not as strict as her. The girl continued to furiously observe her sister's weak-willedness. She wasn't going to play with Jinyo, but finish everything at once, so she was ready to show everything she was capable of. She threw back the automaton, preparing to use her pulse beams. From her back she pulled out two laser pistols, which were hidden behind her big pink jacket the whole time. One moment, and she aimed her beams toward the boy and her sister with a beastly stare. Nothing was more important to her than accomplishing the mission. While Jin Yo and Shimmy had time to pay attention, two super fast beams that were arrow shaped were already approaching them. They were fired from different directions, but they were still heading straight for the target. Shamei realized that her sister's pulse beams were too strong, and as long as she was near the young man, they could also hit her and hurt her quite a bit. At that time, Jin Yo was trying to protect his body from being hit by the rays, so he put up a block with his hands. The guy's arm was ripped off from such a force of rays and thrown backwards, right into the tree he broke behind him. Yushi realized that she could have killed him with the first shot, but Jin Yo managed to defend himself and get injured less than possible. Jin Yushi moved to the tree trunk to deliver a sudden and strong strike at the guy from her new position. In the same instant, the young man had just landed on the ground, as he noticed again the girl behind him, who was already ready for more shots. From the height, she started hitting the target with a lot of her shots. It was raising a lot of dust, behind which the guy definitely couldn't maneuver in time from the fast beams. At that moment, everyone else from the room was watching the fight that was unfolding in the forest. Yang Fang Qin was very worried about the guy, and realized that her superpower would be able to help Jin Yo in the fight. She asked Zian to stay inside with her daughter. The young man eventually managed to get out of the stream of rays. His clothes were torn, and there were many different wounds on his body. While blood flowed out of them, some of the wounds had already managed to heal, using super strength, releasing a large amount of steam. Jin Yo realized that such opponents were not easy to deal with. He compared their strength to a tank. In addition to wielding weapons, they could use teleportation and strike from different points. Yushi was rapidly changing positions again. She wouldn't stop until she completely destroyed the young man. Jin Yo in turn was also not going to give up so quickly. He had already thought of a further plan of action, so he began to put them into action. With one hand he chopped down a thick tree. This was to be his weapon for a while to distract his rival's attention. Bai Jin Yo took this large tree with one hand, and while Jin Yushi was swiftly heading towards it, he prepared to throw the tree trunk in her direction to thus weaken the girl's attention. It partially worked, she really didn't expect a tree to fly towards her. However, the girl successfully sidestepped her collision with the tree. Yushi continued to move towards the guy to completely finish him off with her beams, and complete the task. Several bullets came out of her pockets, and headed for the drum of the gun to load it again. Thus the girl prepared for the decisive part of the struggle. When the preparations were completely finished, Yushi completely walked around the tree that had already fallen behind her. Her intentions didn't change for a moment, so she quickly headed towards her goal. At that time, the guy was also preparing to retaliate against his rival. He didn't have many options left, so he decided to go through the previously worked on gentleman. Jin Yo slammed his superpower into the ground with all his might, causing a large amount of earth to fly into the air. This slowed the girl down for a while, who began to defend herself against a possible attack. This sudden event did not diminish the girl's attention in any way, so after a second, she felt the presence of the guy behind her back. Without wasting any time, she pointed one of her guns backwards and fired, hitting right into the guy's stomach, giving him a deep wound. Jin Yo didn't have much hope for this plan, however, he didn't expect it to fail so immediately. The strong and unexpected shot sent the young man flying backward a little. The girl was a little outraged that he had underestimated her, that he had dared to repeat the very trick he had used on her sister. Jin Yo was worried because he didn't have enough time to regenerate, because just as other wounds started to heal, he had another big one. Yushi realized that this was a good chance. As long as the guy lost most of his strength, she could land a few shots and end it. Without hesitating, she released a powerful and fast ball that was heading towards Jinyo. But suddenly, 
when the bullet hadn't reached the young man yet, Yang Fangqin appeared in front of him and protected him with her superpower, creating a metal shield. Thus, the bullet fought off the woman's sturdy shield. The woman's daughter, Qian Yu, and Zian were still standing at the window watching what was happening in the forest. It seemed to the little girl that the fight between the young man, who had been added by Yang Fangqin, and the opponents was fun and exciting, for it still didn't end. Qian Yu suggested that the girl come down and go watch the battle. This didn't please Zian too much, since the girl's mother had asked her not to go out anywhere. The girl understood that Zian was worried about by Jinyo, so at this opportunity, she tried to persuade the girl to go to the forest. She created a shield from one of her hands and a sharp sword from the other. Yang Fang Qin was also serious, as she didn't want the guy to suffer even more because of such strong and fast opponents. While Zian pondered over the girl's suggestion, she began to act at that time. From the bodily contact with Qian Yu, the girl began to shrink in size. When she had already become the size of a doll, she didn't understand anything, because she didn't know that Yang Fang Qin's daughter also had abilities. Qian Yu was in no hurry to explain her intentions. She only took the girl in her arms and started moving towards the forest. The little girl jumped out of the window, causing Zian to scream. Thus the little girl had decided everything for her. If she didn't dare to go, Qian Yu would carry her there. Yang Fang Qin continued to stand in a defensive stance, smoke from the recently repelled bullet coming out of her metal shield. Behind her, a guy sat behind her, trying to recover his strength and heal his wounds as quickly as possible. The woman turned to him carefully, asking how he was feeling. Yu Shi stood and assessed her new rival. She realized if she could withstand her rays, then she was definitely not an ordinary superhuman. At the same time, another sister, Shai Mai, started moving towards the woman with the guy. Yang Fang Qin didn't know what to expect from her, so she was very focused. I'll end here. So guys, if you like this video and want part 2, let's get 1000 likes for this video. Also subscribe to the channel, click on the bell and leave a comment. Until the next video.